Hello, my name is Rabbi Berhana Gutierrez, and this is the first in a series of videos that will discuss the topic of crypto Jews and crypto Judaism. In the last 40 to 50 years, there's been a tremendous amount of interest in this subject, and a number of works have been written on the Inquisition as well as on the topic of crypto Jews. Individuals, beginning with uh, Ben Sion Netanyahu, the father of the current Prime Minister of Israel, Benjamin Netanyahu, was one such individual that authored a number of works on the Inquisition and on the topic of crypto Judaism. In more recent decades, there have been a number of organizations that have been founded with the purpose of promoting research on this topic, but also assisting individuals that claim to be the descendants of crypto Jews. What I'd like to do in this video is start off by discussing some basic terminology. Uh, but before we do that, I'd like to talk a little bit about the historical context for this uh, historical experience. At the end of the 14th century, in the kingdoms of Castile and Aragon, and in the kingdom of Navarra, on the Iberian Peninsula, a series of violent attacks spread uh, and targeted the Jewish communities of these areas. And while we don't know exactly how many Jews suffered, it seems likely that up to a third of the Jewish community was forcibly converted to Christianity. Uh, a number of Jews, thousands of Jews, were also slaughtered. So the motivation for those who converted was survival. These individuals that converted were referred to as conversos, the Spanish term meaning converted ones. But there were also other terms that were used. The most common term that many people are familiar with is the term marrano. It's the Spanish word that means swine or pig. And as you can imagine, it has a negative connotation. I'd like to reference two sources in the uh, 16th century and in the 17th, uh, 17th century that refer to the use of the term marrano by Spanish uh, sources. The first is the famous Spanish dictionary of 1611. It was authored by Sebastián de Covarrubias, and it defined the term marrano as follows. In the Spanish it says, Es el recién convertido al cristianismo. Tenemos ruin concepto del por haberse convertido fijidamente. Translation of this is that the recent convert to Christianity, of whom we have a despicable opinion for having feigned his conversion. So in 1611, uh, more than 100 uh, years, obviously, uh, actually 200 years since the initial conversions at the end of the 14th century in 1391, and followed by other conversions throughout the 15th century, the term marrano was used to refer to individuals who were the descendants of these initial forced converts and who were regarded as continuing to practice Judaism secretly. Now, if we look at a secondary source, uh, that of Diego Velazquez, who authored the work Defensio Statuti Toletani in 1575, we find that he referred uh, to Spaniards who were descendants of Jews and were baptized fictitiously as Marranos. So in, the term, in terms of Spanish literature, the idea was that those individuals who had converted had done so for the sake of saving their lives. There was no sense that they had done so voluntarily, even though there were individuals who had done so uh, out of conviction or without coercion. So the two uh, most used terms are the term converso uh, and the term marrano. Other terms that were used were the term cristiano nuevos, new Christians, and the term new Christian was used to differentiate between uh, old Christians, that is to say non-Jewish Christians, uh, individuals who had been Christians before the riots of 1391. And this became the basis for the eventual adoption of purity of blood laws, which differentiated individuals who were of old Christian birth, uh, or quote unquote pure Christian birth, and those who were tainted by Jewish ancestry and Jewish blood. Now, in more recent years, there have been other terms that have also been used. Um, the first of this is crypto-Jews, which is sort of the term that I think many scholars uh, choose to use. Um, the term converso continues to be used, and it's also used to uh, include individuals who converted voluntarily, as well as those who co converted under duress. And when we say duress, it does include physical violence, but it's also um, used to connote individuals that converted under economic distress. One of the things that happened in the aftermath of the riots of 1391 and leading into the first few decades of the uh, 15th century were severe economic restrictions on the Jewish communities of Castile and other areas. 
And what resulted was in the economic devastation of many of these communities, which resulted in uh, you know, starvation in many cases. And so some cases, families converted uh, to survive. Uh, from my perspective, that certainly uh, should be included under the category of coerced. But it's clear that the term was used to refer to different types of converts. The other term that's used is the term is the Hebrew term anus or anusim. The term anus is a singular form and it means forced one. It's actually the word that's used for rape. Individuals were violated. They were forced to convert to Christianity against their will. And the term anusim is the plural form of that. The other term that's used is uh, bene anusim which refers to the descendants of or the children of Anusim. And the argument that's used often in using this term is that individuals who claim to be the descendants of uh, conversos in past centuries are not conversos themselves, but they're the descendants of these individuals, the children of conversos or the children of Anusim. It's interesting because in rabbinic literature and rabbinic responsa, there doesn't seem to be a distinction between individuals of the first generation and individuals of subsequent generations that fell under this term. So when they would say, you know, these individuals are from the Anusim, they would use that term rather broadly. Um, in many ways, in the same sense that Spanish literature uh, used the term Marrano to apply to the initial converts as well as converts in subsequent decades and even centuries. So that's a very brief review of some of the terms that are used. And in subsequent videos, We'll look at the historical context. We'll look at some of the major players that were active in the uh, 14th and 15th centuries. We'll look at personalities that were very important in the phenomena of crypto Judaism. And then we'll also look at some of the practices and some of the attitudes of Jews and Christians in response to the class of individuals that were now uh, legally Christian, but continue to be tied to their Jewish past in a variety of different ways. So um, I hope you enjoy this video and the rest of the series, and we'll see you in the next video.